Okay, let's continue with the last talk of today, or last regular talk. Uh, afterwards, there will be a section of lightning talks. You can find the schedule on the URL on the blackboard. And now let's move to DDoS protection by Jasper Brower from Red Hat's kernel team, NetFilter veteran. It's your turn. Thank you. Can, can you hear me from, from the mic? It's, no? <laughs> you can't hear me. That's good. Well, yeah, I'm a kernel developer on the network services team. There's a lot about me, but it's actually quite a boring slide. We just move on to what's, what's, what you get out of this talk, because I'm, I'm quite sure you're more interested in what, what you can get out of this. So the, the one thing you'll learn is that the Linux kernel is actually vulnerable to quite simple soon attacks. And you'll also learn about all the things we've already implemented in the kernel. And I'll, you'll also learn that it's actually not enough. You'll learn about that we have a serious problem with the listen lock if, if a socket is in listen state. Uh, and the solution has sort of been stalled uh, quite some time, so this talk is mostly about how to work around that. So, and I'll show you a talk about uh, a firewall-based solution for this problem called the uh, Soon Proxy. And I'll, you'll also learn about how fast our stateful connection tracking in uh, the Qun Linux kernel is, what the pain points are, and you'll learn some tricks I'm sure this is the sort of the takeaway from this. You'll learn two, two command lines, uh, commands which will boost your performance by a factor 10 when you're under DDoS attack. So keep your pen ready when it comes. You can write it down. <laughs> so first, first the basic tuning. Uh, when I'm doing my test, uh, first of all, I, I kill the IQ balancer because what I want to do is these new hardware uh, netcast they have they have uh, they have hardware queues and I want to bind each hardware queue to a CPU to get uh, the maximum uh, performance and scalability and I don't want the IQ balancer to to move around afterwards another thing I've done in my test is I've disabled Ethernet flow control that's sort of a, because of a, there's a bug in the, the Intel driver which which can cause a single a single queue to overflow, which will block everybody else. It's, it's a sort of a hardware problem. It's, it works if you disable Ethernet flow control. So this is done at the, on the 10 gig driver, all the tests. So a little bit more about focus, because denial of service can be a lot. So in this talk, I'll, I'll, I'll focus on, on uh, TCP and uh, attacking the three-way handshake. So it's basically an end host resource attack. So it's either we send a soon uh, packet and a soon flood, or uh, uh, a soon ag packet and send that as a flood, or the uh, ag flood, flood, which will be the third packet in a, in a three way handshake. And the thing to note is often attackers will just spoof their IP address. So there is, is, will just be fake requests coming in, and we've sort of had to figure out how to reflect these attacks. There's a nice RFC uh, that's, that has been written about TCP uh, soon flood attacks and common mitigations. I'll talk about about that, what we have actually in, done in the Linux at the current kernel. If I'm, I'm using the language from, from that RFC, we, Linux uses a hybrid solution. It's, uh, it has what they call a, a soon cache, which is basically a, a mini recast socket we get in, and which the purpose of that is we have a, a, a minimized state, and we, we delay the full, full allocation of a, of a full socket. We also have uh, a, a soon backlog, where we simply count the outstanding uh, request sockets we have started, if you're above that limit, we, uh, we switch over to use something called soon cookies. I'll get into that also, what, what's that all about? 
so a little about about, about the, the student cash, the, the basic idea about that. They call it the, the TCB, the transmission control block. So we have a smaller structure to when allocating that. I've put in a lot of details on the slides because I've, when looking at, when you search on Google, everybody says that oh, the weaker socket is, it, is uh, 56 bytes, but as I sort of can read the kernel code, it, it's not true. It's, it's because we uh, allocate these structures inside each other and we are backing the, the, the request socket with a, with a slab allocator, which allocates 112 bytes. But, but the important thing, difference here is, is that the full, full structure is uh, 832 bytes compared to the 112 bytes. So we save something. A little note is that we actually <laughs> we are going to increase it in recent kernels. But, uh, it's so some some details about the the the, the soon backlog. Um, it is it is actually not recommended that you if you want to defeat a DOS attack that you increase the soon backlog. <coughs> you should only increase it in the cases where. It actually makes sense if you have a legitimate traffic pattern from your customers, and and you see the log log in the in, in syslog that that you can see that there's TCP possible soon flooding. I want, wanted sort of this detailed slide because a lot of people also miss how they can increase it because it's not quite obvious. You have to change three places, which I've listed here. You have to adjust all three to to, to increase the soon log. Uh, there's a proc file you have to adjust, and I see two proc files you have to adjust. And in your own application, when you start the listen socket, you also have to set the parameters for the backlog. Just some details. So what is this uh, soon cookie concept? It's not like we're eating cookies. But the, the, the basic idea is that when we get in the, the first soon packet, we, we, we don't create any local state. What we do, we simply encode the state in the sequence number and the TCP option, and we send that back in the the, the, the SUNAC packet. And when the, the the person on the other side sends sends the the last act packet back to us, it will contain the sequence number plus one, and we can then recover the state. Uh, it's sort of an oversimplified description, but to also to protect against that the attacker can just send these act packets with with uh, spoofed uh, information to us, so we, we, we will create some state anyhow. We have we have a, a, a share has computed with together with a local secret, so we can actually validate when we get the the act, act packet in from the two three way handshake and validate that state. A little bit more details. One of the problems with this is that this, the share sum calculation is quite expensive. There's some more details about SMP counters. I won't go too much into that. And there's also an option too, you can enable it. So what's, what's, what's really the problem? I said that we had, we've actually implemented everything in the RFC or at least most of the things with the end host countermeasures. So, but we have, we still have a problem with the, the listen state of the socket. And it is actually uh, vulnerable for, for all of the different attacks. It's not only the soon attack. We, it, the same uh, socket lock is hit by the soon act and the act flooding. So, rest of the, the slides here will contain a lot of numbers because I then, at this point, I get, get got completely wild and tested everything, right? <laughs> So I've, I've done uh, some testing on uh, this, this CPU is uh, the first generation CN CPU and with a 10, 10 gigabit uh, net card is, is a quite powerful CPU, but not, not the newest generation because I had to use the newest generation to, to mount the attack against the, this one, this, the smaller machine. <coughs> so if, if we don't have any, uh, actually any, anything running on the socket and no, no one listening Listen on the socket, we can process around uh, 2.9 million packets per second. But all of a sudden, if you just start a, a, a listen socket, 
we, um, we actually want to use the package for something. We, 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 we dropped quite significantly to like 252,000 packages per second, and I also listed the, the, the hit we take from, from the two other types of attack. So that's, that's pretty bad scalability. And I said we, we were, we switch over to, to uh, at least in the, in, in, in the, in the soon, soon state, we, 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 are, we, we are sending these soon cookies and we avoid, avoid creating any state. Why, what, what's, why are we having a problem? Well, that's because the soon cookies, they are under, also have an under the listen log. So I proposed uh, some fixes quite long back, long back in 2012. And they sort of got rejected because I'm not handling the, the soon act and the three way handshake, the last act, act packet. <coughs> but it's been delayed so long, so I sort of got clearance during the last NetBuilder workshop on Randy Chico that that we should we should do it anyhow. So I've created a boxilla to handle that. Well <coughs> instead of uh, So I couldn't get those patches in, so instead I was thinking, well, there's also something called network-based counter measurements. And it's actually the same guy who wrote the RFC I referenced before. He also wrote an article about how you can do something called soon proxy. So what we did, we created a, a NetBuilder module uh, called uh, soon proxy. And it uh, will be available in the latest kernel and I've also backed for it to, to Rail 7, so it will also be available, all this stuff I'm talking about in this slide. And it also works on localhost, and I, I actually done the testing on localhost and didn't do the forward testing. Um, and it solved, of course, the soon situation and also X, X plots. And indirectly, I'm going to show a trick how you also solve the, the soon X attack at the same time with an extra rule. So the basic concept, I'm going to, I think I had to stand out here to point a little bit. <coughs> the basic concept when we have a non-attack situation, and we have, we have the, the firewall or proxy in between here. This is where the, the soon proxy is running. So some initiator calls us a soon, and we will send a spoof soon act packet back. And we will, if, if the initiator has a real server, it will actually connect to the act, and then we start so the backend server start this, we, we create a new uh, three-way handshake and establish the connection. And we have to do sequence on the translation. On the other side, we can see the attack behavior. If the attacker are sending the soon packet, we are sending him soon act packets back. If we're actually sending uh, with, with, with the soon cookies, and we just, we're just sending back here. So we don't have any local state when we're just shooting back the soon cookies. As he is spoofing his IP addresses, he will not uh, reply back to us. And we, 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 are, we are protecting the, the listener behind our model, module. So the soon proxy uh, needs connection tracking. So we f first have to see if we have a problem with performance using the, the connection tracking system in the kernel for, for stateful firewalling. So this is the first two numbers are just repeated our baseline performance. If, if we uh, load connection tracking with no listen lock at all, our performance drops quite significantly to 400 and, uh, 35,000 packets per second, that's not so good. If we actually want to use it for something and start the listen socket, it's, it's even worse. So it drops to <laughs> 172,000 packets per second. It looks pretty bad, but I have some tricks for you to fix this. <coughs> it's, I'm sort of bashing connection tracking, but connection tracking is actually extremely fast when for established connections. We have a completely lockless look, look up, and I'll show you the numbers soon that 
it, it is actually extremely fast to, to look up established connections. Just new connections is, is uh, sort of problematic, deleting and inserting connections that take a central log. Uh, but we can use this knowledge that established connections is, uh, is, 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 is really fast to look those up because we can then do validation against the syn, syn ACK and the, the ACK attacks. The default setting in NetBuilder is to run TCP in a loose mode where we will actually create, even create a, a, a new connection based on a, a ACK if we didn't see the syn. So we will create a, a, a connection for that. We can disable it really easily by this command. And we also need to take advantage of when we do that, it, it doesn't drop the packets right away even though we said it has to be a, in a sort of more strict mode or, or non-loose mode. And to take advantage of this, we have to look, it will actually mark the states as invalid. So we can drop the packets invalid before they reach the listen socket. That's the whole point. This is the command you want to write down because the numbers are quite impressive, uh, these two. So let's see what happens in uh, the, the, if you do a, an egg attack, which everything loaded, connection tracking, and, and listen, a listen, listener, and we have the default loose mode. It's like the really bad performance we saw. We like disabled the loose mode. We still pass the invalid packets. Uh, so we hit the listen lock scalability issue. If we instead drop with the firewall rule I showed you before, we are hitting 5.5 million packets per second. We can just handle them extremely quickly. So it's true what I said that it was actually extremely fast to look up. Before we, we had the situation that, that we've scaled to 3 million, now we can actually just drop it really, really early and really, really fast. So that's, that's a, a performance boost I, I think you all want to enable. So we also have uh, the, the SUNAG attack. And it, is, it doesn't auto-create a, a connection, so, so this uh, loose state is not so important. So we, can, we, we get the, almost the same performance boost by just dropping the invalid packet by this, this, this really, really simple IP tables rule. Just fetch on the state invalid and just chop up those packets. <coughs> so we only have the, the soon attack problem left. And this is due to the connection tracking insert, uh, the baseline numbers again, and loading connection tracking. Using the syn proxy, we, 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 uh, we avoid creating any state because we're using the syn cookie, so we don't create the connection tracking entry and we actually don't create any state, which makes us scale up to 2.8 million packets per second with, with enabling the syn proxy module. So I think this is quite good results, I would, I would say. The, 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 the problem is that uh, setting up syn, the syn proxy is actually quite complicated. So for, 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 for that reason, I, I'll actually go, go through the steps of, of how you use this uh, syn proxy module because it needs some uh, extra, extra rules to enable. I'm going to provide a link with a script which works and which actually also takes parameters you can use when you get home. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that that these connections we're interested in, these soon packets to destination to the specific port we want. We don't want it to, to create a, 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 a connection tracking entry. So we, in the raw table, we, uh, we put, this, put this rule. So, and we say we don't want to create a, a connection tracking entry. And as I told you before, we like this uh, non-loose state. So what, what we're doing here is that to, to catch the, the egg packets from the two-way handshake, we, uh, we, we, we need to get them marked as in, in, invalid. And, and that's, that's what I showed you before. Uh, so we and, and so we we can use this, and in this slide you can see what what 
this quite long rule. What we're doing here is that what's called on track, the state on track, that would be the syn packets, which we have this we have, have catching these two states down here. And the invalid state would be egg packets from the three way handshake. It will also be on other packets, but we'll just simply not handle those and, and pass them through the module. The little, uh, there's some configuration options which are a little tricky to get right. These, these options here, uh, you have to figure out what your backend server actually are using as window scaling at, as, uh, and the maximum segment size. If it supports time standing, if it supports selective acknowledgements. So that's a little bit tricky to configure. So that was basically the setup, but in order to catch these um, SUNAC floods, after that rule, we'll, we'll put in another rule which also catches invalid state, uh, because even though the first module catches, caught the invalid state, it will only pick up, pick up the, the egg packets, which uh, it can use, and when it, the rest of the packets dropping through will contain the SUNAC packets which which are invalid and will be part of that attack and it can also in this situation you also find like the, the fin attacks and all the other kind of attack uh, with invalid uh, flags and we also want to enable TCP timestamping because we are, we are using that in our sim cookies So now we bas you basically got the system, but when, when you're tuning for this stuff, you should also adjust your connection tracking entries because our default is 64 kil kilobyte uh, entries and if you're looking at systems where you need to protect against these attacks, you need to increase the, the amount of connection tracking entries you can handle. So I, I would recommend something like, I tried to do an example with two million uh, connection tracking entries, they each, they each 288 bytes and it's only around uh, just below 600 megabytes of memory yet that you potentially use. It's not like it's allocated right away. It's only when you create a connection tracking entry. Then an uh, important word of ad advice here is if you just do that, you will, you will kill yourself again by scalability because you have to have to increase the hash the hash table, which is used for the hash bucket size, you have to uh, change that. It is this this uh, long prog file here. It, it's not writable, but it's writable via the this file for which is actually the uh, the parameter to the to the contract module. I don't know; it's sort of a mistake that we hadn't made made this one writable. Uh, I guess because it, we, 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 we can't dynamically resize the, the connection tracking hash while running. Uh, so I guess someone is going to submit a patch to fix that, right? Uh, so, and I also take the cat calculation, you might as well take two million entries in that one also to, because you, 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 you would like to, you only do a hash lookup and you, it, there's only one in the, in the bucket. And this, this memory will be allocated permanently <coughs> right right away with hash bucket. So it's only 16 megabytes of memory and you want to have a big server protecting. So I think you can adjust this for that. So the summary of the performance. Yes, it's, it's quite good as you can see. You can see that the performance number dropped a little bit for the, the arc plot because it has, has to actually check if the, has to do a, a little bit more checking on, on, the, on the package to see if this is a valid uh, soon, soon cookie coming back. And this, this long path, I've the net optimizer and network testing, you can find a, a script which sets up what I just uh, walked you through. Um, 
Yes, and, and then, then I talked a little bit about that we had an, an issue with finding the right parameters for the backend servers. It's now, right now it's a manual setup. We did write a, a, a tool for it so you, can, so you can query the server. And we have also up, uh, updated the documentation recently, how you can do it by TCP done so you can see which, how, how your backend server is. And the sort of one setting per rule, if your servers behind your firewall uh, are all e like the same, it's, it's uh, quite easy, but if your servers behind the firewall are, are different configuration, you'll, you'll have a problem. You'll have to have a rule for each, and of course, it's in a, like a normal DHCP-based network. You, 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 you basically cannot use it because you don't know the client's configuration. So the future plan is, is to auto detect this, these, uh, these uh, TCP options. And my idea was simply to allow the first packet through and catch the SWIM and decode the options. And Florian pointed out that I had to handle a little bit more, more situations, which makes the problem a little worse, but I guess it's still do doable. Um, and yeah, and I, I also got some, uh, some real life uh, tests at least I know one person using the module on his real life system. He's using it like I, I tested it with on, on the local host um, for protecting his servers. He hasn't set up a firewall in front of him. So I got this data from him. When you can see the, the red line is, is the, the soon received. So you can see that all, all of a sudden here he has an attack of about 900,000 packets per second coming in. You can see that the, the green line is the interesting one, that, that the valid cookies it finds, it's, it, it doesn't change in this period when he's under attack. There's also, he also plotted the uh, invalid cookies for me, which is really low. It would be really high if, if this was an egg attack. But this is a soon attack. There are some s things in the graph which we cannot quite explain <laughs> yet, but it's uh, real life data. So one thing he complained about, he also sent me this graph, that was the, the Sun Cookie Shay, Shay Som was also quite expensive. So this is the time used in software IQ when, when he's under attack and he profiled it for me and said the top one is like the Shay Som cal calculation. So I'm trying to convince Florian to fix that. <laughs> I created a boxilla for him. Um, this, this graph, I, d I, I don't understand so much actually. This is what he says he, d he does when, when he has an attack. He, this is the outgoing, this is only the outgoing traffic, the, even though there's two of them. He says he, he looks, he quickly looks at the out outbound tra traffic to see if it looks uh, out of the ordinary. And he says this is normal because in this section here, it didn't drop down to, to a really low level. The graph is a little bit strange because there's two, two measurements here. I think I'm pretty good time. So we get the, the full story. <coughs> this, this, we still have, have this uh, hyperscalability issue even with the soon, soon, uh, soon proxy module in if someone creates a full connection. If someone has a real botnet with real real servers which can thus establish the full full handshake to uh, to an R so start the handshake and just hangs the the, the connection. Uh, but I would say we have we have made it significantly more expensive for 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 soon attacks. If for, if people deploy the solution they will the 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 soon attackers will actually have to buy or rent <laughs> botnets, which are, are more expensive. So that should hopefully lower this this kind of attack. So the future work, we have to fix scalability for the listen socket. Like Dumasé has promised me, he will look into that. And we also have this locking in the connection tracking with new connection tracking entries. We also have to fix that lock. It's not only the listen log we have to fix, we also have to fix that. So that's, I've been working on fixing that. That's what I'm working on at the moment. 
So we have this insert and delete problem, which takes a central log. So I'm working on removing the central log. I've been basing my work on something Eric Dumasé made. And so the preliminary results is like, remember the baseline, if you enabled connection tracking without any distance target, you'll just get this, this quite huge hit. Uh, and my current solution, we go to 1.6 million packets per second uh, with, with parallel logging. So that's quite good because we also, we also when, when, when we hit this situation, it will actually create, create the real connection tracker entry where we will find out that we are under resource constraints. We also have to delete a connection tracking entry. Um, so it's, it's a hard case when you're under attack. So this is actually a quite good number. It's not like the, the three million we saw before because we actually have to do real work now. So we have some time left. I was not sure if we had time. So I'll go through some, some hacks or, or, or workarounds for this. So and, uh, sort of an ugly hack you could do is you could start several Apache or Varnish servers on several local ports, which will then have a scalability problem per, per, per port number in the listen state. And you can have IP tables uh, rewrite these, um, these, uh, these ports uh, locally to, to the host. This is sort of an ugly hack, and I haven't put any uh, rules up here so you can do it easily. I think it's an assignment for yourself if you want to, to do such an ugly hack. I have some other hacks where I'll show you <laughs> the real IP tables uh, <laughs> settings. So another, another trick you can play, I actually got this from, from, the, from the guy who also ran this, uh, these tests. So what he says is that, okay, I still ha I'm, I'm afraid that, that someone will have a big botnet attacking me. What I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll partition the, the entire internet into uh, slash 24 subnets using the, he, he's using the hash limit. And he says, okay, this, the size of, of like all 24 subnets and he chooses a number where he says, okay, I'll then hit around. So if I create my, my hash this size, I will maximum if a perfect distribution have max four, four hash, hash entries per, per list. I have to do in the, in, the, in the hash limit. And he says, okay, for each 24 subnet, I'll allow 200 swim packets per second per subnet and calculate the, how much memory he's using it at the fixed size hash table, 16 megabytes, assuming he will maybe have 200,000 or 500,000 uh, host attacking him. Maybe he's using 32 megabytes <coughs> of memory. So this is, this is the long rule he's, he's using. So he's using this as a workaround against if some real botnet wants to attack him. So he tries to basically this what I just described that it's the 200 and the subnet, the source mask. Uh, I did some profiling on, on his on his rules, and we actually have a scalability issue in the hash hash limit. Also, it still scales quite good to like two million packets per second, but we can we can still make it make it better actually. So that's one trick. You can also, there's also an alternative uses of the socket module. If you don't like this connection tracking at all, uh, you can <coughs> use a module called uh, socket in, in IP tables, IP service module. And what what you do here is you, it only works for for, for local local sockets, so you can sort of filter out to the matches if this is a local socket. Uh, when packets coming into it, and you can you can filter out the the tree where hands, handshake and other combinations. It's a little bit difficult to use. Actually, I've also created a script for that, but 
and I had to use also when I'm using this, I'm also using the, the hack I showed you before from, from uh, the slide where I used the, the hash limit because I cannot, it can still be, even though I can match, I can collect out the, the three-way handshake egg packets from, from, from the, 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 the real egg package which belongs to the socket, I, 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 I cannot, I'll, I'll, it has an annoying thing where I, I, I cannot drop them directly because it's, it's, it can't be sort of uh, and valid for, for, the, for the first connection, the three-way handshake egg still knows, needs to go and I cannot see if this is a real one or, or a fake one in this situation. So I'm trying to limit it by the, the hash limit module but it didn't scale as well as I expected. Um, so this is actually, then I have five minutes left, I can see. <coughs> so I want to thank uh, Martin Tomfarm and one.com, which provided the real life attack data. And I have already uploaded my slides to, to this link here. And the organizers said that you should go in and wait my talk and we actually have time left. So even though it's unlikely that I have time left, so <laughs> any questions? Yeah. So I don't have any other need for a contact. Um, what is the performance of the hack? Is anyone contacting the responsible for the making of that hack? Well, the <coughs> yeah, th so, so, so the, the, the question was if, if if, if, if I don't, if, if you don't really need contract, and so what, what's, what's, what, what's, what's the overhead of, 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 of doing this? Uh, so basically, I, I haven't told you that the, the sort of the, the bad part about this, that I'm a proxy in the stream, actually it, it delays the time, the setup time, because you will have uh, uh, two, two connections being established, actually. So you have the first connection, for, if for completely legitimate connections, you have the first connection being established against the student, the, the proxy, and afterwards it will, it will establish the connection back. So I think we have this. Uh, oh, that's the wrong way. Here, here it was. So you can see that, that this is the time out here. So you are actually delaying. It's not just something you just always should enable because you are this is the time scale down down here, so you, it takes longer to establish a connection with, with this module loaded. Is that what you're well, interested in? Yeah, so the question is, what, what, what's, what's the word of, of doing this connection tracking, rewriting the, the the, the sequence numbers and, and stuff like that. I haven't actually measured that, how, what, what the overhead is, but it would be not exactly the same overhead as, as normal uh, connection tracking. But if, if you don't need the connection tracking and enable that, you, you will get that extra overhead. So any other questions? <laughs> Great. What? So the question is, if we have documented this, how how in the kernel tree or somewhere, it's, it's not documented in the kernel tree, but it's documented in, in the IP tables uh, tree. There's a, you can write, or says, man IP tables dash extensions, that we have documented exactly how to set this up, basically based on my scripts, uh, and I provide the script, and I even gave, gave our QA the script, yeah. Uh, I don't know actually, I, I don't see any issues in, it should just, you could enable, you could enable it and you will just fake the connection towards the load balancer, the IPVS load balancer. Uh, so, I'm out of time. <laughs> Thank you.